I swear to you I'm mature! What's going on everyone? It's the Niskel. Last time on Conker's Bad Fur Day, we got our hands on some poo. Yeah, you could say we got our hands dirty. <laughs> okay, I won't be making those all throughout. Now, uh, in this episode, we're going to be going to the right path. As opposed to the left and going up Poo Mountain, we're going to go to the right and pollute some water. Environmental messages all over the place. Oh good, another poo ball. Um, as mentioned in the last Live and Reloaded episode, it is a lot smarter if you're playing through this game to play it this way. It is much easier to play through it this way, and that'll be shown a lot later. I'll just spoil it right now. You need a thousand dollars before you go into Pooh Mountain, and it is absolute bullcrap playing through your first time and figuring out you have to go, you have to jump through hoops and all this other crap just to find out that you have to go back through hell again. Begging for food? Meow. Meow? What? Well, you look like you could do with a little extra, my boy. Meow. And we thought you might actually be interested Meow. in earning some cash. Meow. You're offering me cash. Okay. Well, what's the catch? Well, there's this awful, awful brute swimming around. He's terrible, and he's stolen our valuable belongings. Like my other friends. We need somebody disposable to go in and, well, get rid of him. Meow. Ah, uh, me, you mean. Well, you can't expect one of us to go, can he, ladies? We're blue-blooded, don't you know? Meow. Well, asses to you, then. I gotta watch out for myself. Oh, dear. What language. Don't worry, dear. He's as common as milk. Common as dirt like that. This is that for this name. Me Let me handle it, dear. Listen, here, you. Listen to me. We'll give you 10%. And that's our final offer. Now. 10%? Yes. But one thing to remember. Shh, shh, shh. Come closer. He's easily wound up. Mm, yes. Oh, and by the way, the safe has a combination. Yes, you know what that means? Well, but it's not dangerous down there for us. Hmm? Come back, and we'll open it for you. Well, good luck. Go on, top top, off with you. Meow. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Hang on a sec. What was that about disposable? Hey. Screw you, disposable. Uh, I have squirrel tails, bitch. I can live as many times as I think I can get away with. Now, up there is quite a lot of money. But we won't be getting it till the end of this chapter, so you definitely have something to look forward to. Now, if Okami has taught us anything, and pretty much any other game with a waterfall, there's always a secret behind a waterfall. It's a cheap way out. There will always be a squirrel tail back here. And some chocolate, just in case you got hurt. Now, this is one of my favorite chapters. It's got some of my favorite characters, it has some of the coolest quote-unquote bosses. I really like this chapter. And that is one of the reasons why the Bulldog Fish. He barely does anything in this whole chapter, but he just has that presence that you just don't want to fuck with this dog. And it's just, it's really brilliant how they pull that off. Pretty cool semi-boss, sub-boss. Oh, who's this guy? Cog. 
Why is it everybody so offensive around here? Either bring me back me missing cunts. Oh, you don't have to shout. I'm deaf. Speak up. Oh, f up. Hmm. Hang on a second. Well, hello there. And aren't you the handsome one? Tell me, would you be prepared to do me a small favor? A little help, of course. Hi. And, um, yes, I would. Maybe. You see, my other self has lost a few of his, uh, shall we say, friends. And if you don't get them back, my life will be a misery. It already is. And? Just get them back. There's a good fellow. Ta-ta, ta-ta. You twat! Don't ever do that again! Now f*** off! I can just imagine how much fun Chris Savor was having voicing this character. This is one of my favorite characters, Mr. Cog. He is hilarious. And uh, rumor states that if you stand there long enough, uh, fuck off will be uncensored. But it's probably not worth your wait because it takes a long time. Oh, these guys again? Ooh! Ooh! This brings back the flamethrower! Yes! We get to burn some bats! Bring it on, bats! I've got contact sensitivity! Burn! <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. Uh, same rules apply as the first time you met with the bats. If you're not comfortable, about halfway across these beams, you can just hover over. Which I have failed to mention time and time again. That helicopter tail, the hovering he does, it's a parody of Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. It completely skipped my mind. I don't know how I couldn't have made that connection. But, uh, if you want to skip the bats in this section, just feel free to jump from rope to rope. It's a lot easier than going on the balance beam and falling. That is one of the worst feelings, is falling from the top of Bat's Tower. And then dying. This was actually going to be my secondary plan for showing off Greg the Grim Reaper, was going to the top of Bat's Tower collecting the money that's yelling at me right now and just straight falling down and splatting all over the ground it would have been great but I don't know if I would call it the let's play curse or something else maybe I'm just terrible at this game I don't know plans never go as they that they need to uh, yeah we need to go to the top of bats tower again Ooh, I almost fell there there is a hundred dollars up here. Really, really difficult money to get. It because of the camera. Now, normally I don't bitch about cameras. I'm I'm not that guy. I don't want to be that guy. But this camera angle here is probably one of the worst in this game. You can't exactly judge where you're going to land, especially when you want to skip these guys. If you fall behind here, you will go back and fall in front of the bulldog fish. Which doesn't equal death, but falling in front of it, you're automatically going to die. So save yourself by running into the money or take it safe and fight the clang goblins. Whatever you choose, it's difficult either way. Give me that money! Alright. Now, this is actually a really hard jump to make. I know the rope is over there. Leap of faith! It worked! Yes! All right! I cannot believe that worked. Just need to be nice and careful. Well, screw careful. Wow, that really should have lost some life there. I'm doing a lot but Never mind. I was about to say, I was doing a lot better than normal, and I lose a piece of chocolate. Now, uh, we have to go, <laughs> I love that guy. We have to go find Mr. Cog's other Cog friends. 
Uh, friends with benefits, you could say. Yes, we need to go find Mr. Cog's lady friends. They do like to run away. A lot. Luckily, they just take a frying pan to the face, and they're good to go. Just like all women, right, guys? Eh? Eh? R right? Yeah. Sure. And here we go, we got the first cog. Hey, oh, hold the hell. Come on, put it on, Trick. Put it on, I like it like that. Oh, oh, fan fantastic. Uh, oh, hang on, I think I got it on the wrong way round. Black booger, you have. What are you doing? What? Ah, oh, f. Further research would denote that the Cogs, the split personality Cog, which I've been calling Mr. Cog, is Carl and Quentin. So Carl's the bad side, Quentin's the good side. I had no idea they... Well, I knew they had a split personality, but I never knew they had official names. And you live and learn. Now, the other two Cogs would be here, but the Nintendo 64 decided, I'm not going to load it for you. It happens most of the time, so don't worry. If it happens to you, nothing ro is wrong with your game. Just go out, come back in, and they should be back. If they don't, just do it a couple more times. Maybe swim back to where Carl and Quentin were, and then they'll be back. So, don't worry. You haven't been locked out of the rest of the game. I really kind of like, really don't like what they did in Live and Reloaded to this chapter. It's really stupid, and I'll, I'll, we'll get there when we get there. But, uh, these are probably the hardest cogs to get because as soon as they see you, they turn tail and run. So you basically have to sneak up on them and jump hit them, I guess, which is what I had to do, and it, it gets them pretty quickly. I'm actually curious as to, uh, if these... Cogs, these cogs with benefits, I guess, have uh, names too. Yeah, go on, get to the one on. That's really not that important. Do you think Carl the cog is a pimp, or maybe he just really likes wooden blowjobs? I don't know. And really, this is a weird topic, topic to be talking about in something that looks like a kid's game. On the outside. On the inside, lord no, I would never let my kid play this. Until he was like 15. There we go, last cog. No troubles at all. And this will help out for the rest of the chapter. Now, when you're first playing this, you're kind of wondering, well, what could this possibly do? Getting Cogs for <laughs> Mr. Cog, or Carl. I think I'm just going to call him Mr. Cog, because Carl's such a... Thanks, f***head. Now go f*** off with you. Maybe Quentin is the name of the, of the mean Cog. That would make him even gayer. Good lord, he's gayer than that giant Cog with a porn stash. My favorite character ruined! Conker's Bad Fur Day, why? That's tossed it right up there. I do declare it is well free at last to exact our revenge on this evil cock. Grab him! Oh, 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 oh. oh no! 
not Mr. Big Cog. He likes it That's like me, that. That's me, buggered. Uh, I'm out of here. I don't know what his problem is. I find it rather delicious. Thank you, Mr. Squirrel. Oh, my pleasure. Yes, and I'll think you'll find that your little problem outside has been thoroughly taken care of. Of oh, course. Cool. Now, good day to you, sir. Toffee nose snob. Why, thank you, Mr. Squirrel. <coughs> Come on, ladies. It's the Caribbean Furs. Well, there we go. We helped out some poor cog ladies get away from the evil cog. And we're going to make that oh-so-lovely transition over to Live and Reloaded. Let's see what has changed, because there were quite a few things. Later! Here we go!